Armenia, a small nation in the South Caucasus region, is fighting for its survival. It's fighting for its very existence. And India is arming Armenia with a variety of weapons systems. Now, of late, Armenia has taken a rather pro-West and anti-Russia geopolitical stand because of the way events have played out in the past few years. So India is arming what's essentially an anti-Russia nation in what has traditionally been Russia's almost exclusive zone of influence. And yet, Russia may be fine with this. Why is that? Well, please subscribe and let me explain why it is so. This video is brought to you by my geopolitics course, Geopolitics from First Principles. The link is in the description below. So first of all, let's take a look at a map of the region to orient ourselves. And then I'll explain what has been happening. So this is the map of the region. And we have Armenia, as you can see, a small nation, which is east of Turkey and north of Iran. To its west is its implacable foe, Azerbaijan. To the north is Georgia. And further north is Russia. And across the uh, Caspian Sea, you have Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan and so on, these nations. So that's the geographical situation. Now, Armenia historically has existed for at least two and a half thousand years. Historically, it used to be a Zoroastrian region during the time of the Persian Empire. It was one of the first kingdoms to convert to Christianity. And it has two major adversaries today. Turkey and Azerbaijan. Turkey is the larger adversary and there's quite a bit of history over here. Armenians used to live all across the Anatolian Peninsula for a very significant portion of history and the Turks conducted a series of multiple waves of genocide beginning in the late 19th century against the Armenians and this all culminated in the first quarter of the 20th century when the major Armenian genocide happened around 1915 and when Turkey became independent in the early 1920s all the remaining Armenians were essentially you could say eliminated or expelled whatever you want to call it from Turkey. That's the history between these two nations. Now, Armenia and Azerbaijan were both part of the USSR. During the time of the USSR, the region of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh was administratively kept as part of the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic instead of the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic for administrative reasons. Now, in the late 1980s, when it became apparent that the USSR was on the road to collapsing, essentially, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh demanded that they should become part of Armenia. And there was a conflict that began around 1988 and the USSR disintegrated in 1991. Both Armenia and Azerbaijan declared independence and there was a war from 1988 to 1994 for the fate of Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia won that war. So Armenia gained control over Nagorno-Karabakh and surrounding regions. So this was a, a setback, a significant setback for Azerbaijan. Fast forward to 2020, the Azer Azerbaijanis attacked, uh, they, they launched a, a war uh, to regain some territory and they were successful in this. This was a, a war in which you saw new technologies being used, uh, loitering munitions, drones, all of that. And the uh, Azerbaijanis were able to not only liberate the uh, surrounding regions of Artsakh that, uh, that Armenia had uh, essentially con been controlling since 1994, but they were also able to take back certain parts of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. They were able to uh, conquer and capture certain parts of Nagorno-Karabakh. So this was a victory for Azerbaijan. Now, Armenia is part of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, which is an intergovernmental military alliance of Russia and five other nations. So one of the uh, fundamental foundational principles of this CSTO is that an attack on any nation is an attack on all other nations. And if one of the nations which is a member of CSTO is attacked, then the other nations need to come to its aid. But that doesn't apply to an extraterritorial matter like Nagorno-Karabakh because Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh was not officially part of Armenia. So this war happened and the Azerbaijanis were able to retake parts of Nagorno-Karabakh. But there were attacks on Armenia as well, missile attacks on Yerevan, etc., the capital city. And Russia did not come to the aid of Armenia when this happened. This is a fact, 2020. So that is the beginning of the rift uh, between Armenia and Russia. And Armenia had been taken, taking, the Russians say that it began before that in uh, 2018 or so when the current uh, uh, leader of Armenia came to power. They say it was a Western-backed government and so on. So there's been a rift growing between Russia and Armenia. So 2020, the second Nagorno-Karabakh war, Ar uh, 
Azerbaijan wins. Then 2023, there was a brief conflict again between Azerbaijan and Armenia, once again started by Azerbaijan, in which Azerbaijan regained the rest of Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, it was kind of a humiliation for Azer for Armenia. And at the end of the second Nagorno-Karabakh war in 2020, there was the placing of Russian peacekeepers in this region. So Russia expanded its military sphere of influence. So that's what's happened thus far. Russia has not come to the aid of Armenia. And Armenia has uh, of late taken uh, a more pro-Western stance. They're saying that since Russia isn't able to defend us and, and help us out, we will turn to the West. That's kind of the situation. Okay. Now, India has been arming Armenia for the past few years. Swati radars, Pinaka rocket systems, artillery guns. So India has been arming Armenia, which is an anti-Russia nation. And these arms shipments apparently from India to Armenia are being routed through Iran, which is interesting because south of Armenia and Azerbaijan, you have Iran, a major nation. So Iran is facilitating India's arms shipments to Armenia. And Iran and Russia are kind of on the same team, essentially, you could say. Iran, Russia, and China, there's a kind of a trilateral quasi-alliance brewing, anti-Western alliance brewing. So you can see that from the actions of these nations, the Russians haven't said anything negative about India's arms shipments to Armenia. And the Iranians are actually facilitating this. So now, now let's understand why this is the case. So you may recall that Azerbaijan is a pro-Turkey nation. They would, the Turks and the Azerbaijanis would like to establish a pan-Turan corridor, which essentially wipes out Armenia and connects Turkey via Azerbaijan all the way to Turkmenistan, which establishes a, a, a corridor of the Turkic nations. So Armenia is the only entity standing in the way and they would like Armenia to disappear from the world's map. Right Now, Azerbaijan and Turkey, they both support Pakistan's stand on Kashmir. And Azerbaijan is interested in buying uh, the JF-17 fighter plane that is jointly produced by Pakistan and China. It's essentially a Chinese uh, warplane, but the Pakistanis are also involved in some way. So the Azerbaijanis want to, uh, are interested in buying that warplane. A uh, few, num few numbers, maybe eight or 16 or whatever it is. And the Azerbaijanis are also cooperating with Turkey and they also want to buy uh, the future fifth generation Turkish fighter plane. So there is a significant amount of synergy between Azerbaijan and Turkey. And Turkey is a NATO nation. And Turkey is a rival to Russia historically, even during the Russian Empire time, during the time of the Ottoman Empire, Turkey and Russia were rivals. So Turkey is a member of NATO. It has its own geopolitical agenda that is nothing to do with NATO, but it's a member of NATO. So Russia would not like this pan-Turan corridor to happen, which would expand NATO influence all the way to Turkmenistan. And Armenia, even though it's kind of anti-Russia right now, it is a good asset to have in the place. And the Russians don't want Armenia to disappear. And they don't want Armenia to become too pro-West either. They don't want it to become a NATO proxy in the region. So Azerbaijan is interested in buying Chinese Pakistani warplanes. So you can see China is also indirectly trying to encroach into Russia's traditional zone of influence. So you can see a subtle Russia-China rivalry, you know, beneath the surface of this entire matter. And you may recall that Russia has uh, sold the S-400 uh, weapon system to not only China, but also to India. And you may also recall that Russia has allowed, has agreed to let India sell BrahMos missile systems to the Philippines, which are an anti-China nation because of China's bullying. So you can see there is a subtle undercurrent of Russia-China rivalry over here. There is Russia-China rivalry, despite what all the geopolitical experts will tell you about the uh, alliance, so supposed alliance or modus vivendi between Russia and China. That is not quite the case. The two nations are natural adversaries and they will be adversaries in the long run. So Russia does not want Armenia to disappear from the map. It does not want Armenia to start buying NATO weapons and become essentially a NATO proxy. So Armenia is buying weapons from India and also from France, which is a NATO member. But France is has a quasi-independent foreign policy and France chafes under the chains of NATO. So France has 
an agenda of its own. It, of course, is a NATO member. So Russia would like Armenia to keep receiving weapons and arms and systems from India, which will ensure that it doesn't take too much of a pro-Western uh, Western stand. If it starts acquiring weapons, American weapons, that's going to be a disaster for Russia. Won't be a disaster, but it's not something that Russia would want in its zone of influence, in the Caucasus region, which has traditionally come under Russia's zone of influence. And more importantly, Armenia doesn't threaten Russia militarily. Armenia wants to stay alive. Armenia, Armenia wants to stay, keep on existing. Its major threats are Turkey and Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a Turkish proxy. So these weapons that India is selling to Armenia, they do not threaten Russia. So that is the deal. And that is the reason why it is perfectly fine with India selling arms to Armenia. Now, why is Iran facilitating Indian arms shipments into Armenia? Well, there's a whole other dimension over here. It's interesting, rather interesting, that Israel supports Azerbaijan in this war against, in this conflict against Armenia. And Azerbaijan, if it is a pro-Israel, pro-Western nation, right north of Iran with a common, significant common border, and then it's a problem for Iran. And there's a significant Azeri population in, in, in Western Iran as well, which is again a concern for, for Iran. So Iran is Persia, but only 50% roughly of the population of Iran is Persian. There are other ethnic groups like the Azeris, Azerbaijanis, the, the Arabs and Balochis and so many more. So there's a concern there that Azerbaijan could be spying on Iran and facilitating anti-Iran activities, which would be NATO activities. So once again, for Iran also, it is important that Armenia continues to exist and Armenia is strengthened. That's why Iran and India seem to be working together in transshipping weapons and arms to Armenia. So Iran has the strategic deal with China in which China will invest tremendous amounts of money into Iran and the Iranians will supply China with energy. And the Chinese are selling essentially their fighter planes to Azerbaijan, which is kind of an anti-Iran move. So there's this complex layers. There are complex layers of geopolitics over here. There are overlapping interests. There are friends that ap appear to be friends, but actually are competitors and adversaries. Nations that seem to be allies are competing against each other and trying to un undermine the other. It's pretty complex. This region is typically very complex. The Balkans are even more complex. But overall, this is the situation. Russia doesn't want Armenia to become too strongly pro-West. Russia doesn't want Armenia to have NATO weapon systems on its territory. And Russia wants Armenia to stay alive. It's, it wants Armenia to keep existing. It doesn't want an expansion of NATO influence or Turkish influence in the region. Russia also doesn't want the expansion of Chinese influence in the region. And that's why Russia and India and Iran are collaborating on this matter to help Armenia, despite Armenia's anti-Russia stance. So that is the deal. Pretty complex, but I hope this makes sense after the explanation. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon in the next video.